<laughs> I mean, Dana, take it away. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. I didn't know. So this black principal is very decorated today. It's Aloha Day. So we're so glad to be able to see you all. Um, welcome. Welcome. We'll go ahead and... Um, share our slides. I have my amazing assistant principal here with me, Angela Mendoza. So she um, will be starting off our presentation today, um, sharing with you all. So thank you everyone for being here. Like Norma said, it is very busy, but we will be quick and concise for you all so that we can get started. So I'll turn it over to Angela at this time. Can everybody just give me a thumbs up that you can see our screen? Awesome. All right, Ms. Mendoza. And you're driving, right? Okay. Good morning. Uh, again, I'm Miss Angela Mendoza. For those of you that do not uh, know me, I haven't had the pleasure of working with. Um, so we're going to start with uh, building a positive school culture and creative uh, scheduling. Okay, so our year one journey began uh, this past May of 2021 when we were selected as a blended learning campus to start that journey again. We, um, everyone was welcome to on this journey with us. And I have been fortunate enough to uh, engage in this journey with both leaders, both with Ms. Frias and now with Ms. Boyd. Uh, one of the things that I learned when I was with Ms. Frias at Lancaster, um, the instructional coach with me was uh, Tessa. We were going over and over how to invite everyone. How are we going to do it? Should we start with one grade level and go to the next? Uh, Ms. Frias originally said, let's just open it up and have the volunteers. I think that did a lot. At first, I thought she was crazy. I thought <laughs> nobody's going to volunteer. Um, but one thing I learned there and has proven here at uh, Parkland as well is teachers are super, super competitive. And so when you open it up and you allow them to volunteer instead of being voluntold that they're going to do it as a grade level for the alignment or anything like that, you have that buy in. Um, so I've seen it happen on two separate campuses. Uh, both at Lancaster and here at Parkland, where when you open it up and you entice them, they start talking. You have some that will volunteer right away, and then it only takes a matter of time when they start having PLC and we start having our instructional coaches talking about all the wonderful things that we're going to be doing. Um, little by little, everyone starts joining in. So that was key uh, for that. Also, the staff reflection activity that Norma had us do at the very beginning. Um, all our faculty and staff, they were highlighting and really reflecting on the pillars and where they are. What is it that they're doing consistently in their classroom? So I think that was also key for them to self-reflect and think about, am I really doing this? Because um, we unfortunately get a lot of times teachers, they stop growing. They think I've got it. I don't need to you know, learn this new blended learning thing. But when they reflect, is it teacher led what I'm doing or is it student led? All the best practices with blended learning um, that entice them to come on board as well. Uh, so in June, we introduced our pillars, pillars one and two as our focus. Um, again, both campuses did that. I believe before it was pillars one and four, but now it's pillars one and two. Um, all of our staff participated in the Summer Institute, and we did uh, have enticements for that. They were, there, were, there was the HE, but also um, pain, but everybody jumped on board, everybody. We decided math was gonna be our content focus and we're continuing to learn and grow each day with that. Um, so our pillars one and two, just real quick. Pillar one, we believe it, it all starts with the relationships and the culture. Um, and that's, that's key for the successful implementation. That was key at East Point when Ms. Boyd started uh, there, the blended learning, and also at Lancaster. Um, these are just some of the, the, the data walls that we have. And I've been able to see, I think at first at Lancaster, they were very, very nervous as far as, 
you know, displaying uh, the kids' names and where they where they're at. But I've seen uh, teachers come up with brilliant ideas on how to develop that culture. And that one that I uh, we put a picture of the math and the reading data. The kids, the teacher had those conferences with them and had those discussions so that they felt like it's part of a community. And I heard her say, have a talk with one of the students when he says it's, uh, oh, that's easy. And how another student feels when it's not easy to them. But they have like the 100 book club, I mean, not book, the 100 club, 90s club, 80s club, and then it's reaching for success. So it's not, you know, uh, these kids are failing or but the, the classrooms really have developed uh, classroom goals as well as individual goals that we have there. Um, and then of course, pillar two, because of the anticipated learning loss, especially with math, and you have to know your data um, in order to have DDI and to have personalized instruction for blended for our students. Um, our timeline for our focus pillars, pillar one is the end of the first semester and pillar two is for the end of the year. We've really, really gone into depth with what does that look like? What does it sound like? The leadership team is modeling it. Anytime we meet with our faculty and staff, our teachers, we're modeling what blended should look like. Uh, Ms. Boyd and I, when we met with our teachers for their goal setting conferences, a lot of teachers came in and their goal didn't state blended learning, but it was blended learning. And so uh, we walked them through the process as far as their goal statement. Where are you in the pillars? Are you in beginning, developing? Where do you want to be by the end of the year? What are the action steps that you're going to need to take? And what is the success criteria for that? Um, so we blended that, blended, blended learning with uh, their goal because their plates are full. And so if this is gonna be our focus, then that should be their goal for, for their school year as well. Okay, and we're all in this together. This is a picture of our wonderful uh, leadership team. This was an activity that we did at the beginning of the year that we all have to stick together. And we are doing that not only um, as a campus with everything else, but especially with the blended. So uh, administration, we shouldn't be the only ones that are learning. We've come from blended learning campuses, um, but we're also learning. We're growing with our teachers and our leadership team. Uh, but we've also talked to teachers about their, um, our, our CT or ITC, whatever we call them now, they're always changing the name. Um, he's not going to be the only one responsible for the technology part. He's developed the cadre and we're working with the teachers so that they can help their grade levels. Our instructional coaches aren't going to be doing, uh, pulling everything together. We're all learning together as a team, but we're also modeling it. So our leadership team, we take turns being the leads for our monthly bl uh, blended learning meetings. We're all going to attend one of two of the meetings required for the cohort. But as it is right now, everybody's attending everything because we want to. Um, we want to keep learning. Uh, we're implementing the blended learning strategies in our roles every time we have PD. And we're moving towards having blended learning professional development for the teachers as well. So it's very much. Uh, do as I say and do, not just do as I say and not what I do. We're all a part of it and we're all uh, on this journey together with our, our teachers. Thank you, Ms. Mendoza. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to be able to clarify when we had um, the end of pillar one for pillar one and pillar two, that that's just at the developing stage. It's not all of the, the complete pillar by the end. So when we say for pillar one, at the developing by first semester, that's our goal for this year is the developing stage. So not the entire, um, all of those to be at that, um, at that achieving level, all right? So time heals all blended, Time heals all blended wounds, right? So everybody, it, it's tough being um, in a blended learning at campus. So we wanted to make sure that the process was slow. I learned from East Point 
Um, I went way too fast, even though I thought we went slow, um, we still went too fast. So I had to slow the process. We also had our teachers um, this last week, they did a self-reflection and a letter grade for themselves. What grade would they give themselves at this point of where they are in blended learning? Many of the teachers gave themselves C's and D's and um, we were having the conversation with them that they're just being way too hard on themselves, that really most of us are A's and B's right now in our blended journey, that we have to really continue to be able to support them and let them know where we are, that remember our goal for a pillar one is the end of the semester. We're barely in week six, and for them just to um, not be so hard on themselves. So we give every um, grade level has monthly planning days. We know that substitutes are a big um, hardship on everybody, but we've made um, the campus culture to be able to say if we're short on subs, that we know that we can split students up in classes so that we can be committed and have it tight um, with regard to that also. So monthly planning days um, are, are a must. Um, that is one thing. And our K through two had theirs in August and our instructional coaches are there during the planning days also. Okay, everyone likes tangible incentives. So we um, decided um, for our teachers that everyone started with a differentiated cart because we wanted to give them a visual for differentiated stations. So that was important. Also, we put out incentives or tangible to teachers. If you attend the, if you attend the teach conference or those after school PDs, um, three out of the four PDs, you can have a personal laminator or a portable desk. Um, we also gave the um, incentive, if you do both, then you can have both items, a laminator and the portable desk, if you do that. Also, we put out to teachers that we are looking for Sharon Wells model classrooms, and that would be um, with that incentive, they get a PO for really good stuff to be able to enhance their math practices using Sharon Wells. Okay, so what that is with our, our Sharon Wells model classroom, what we're looking at is someone with a model school, a model Sharon Wells model classroom would be using the Sharon Wells basic facts as a must do on their menu. Also, these teachers would be pre-assessing using test taking skills um, paper two weeks before new concepts. So we're pre-assessing our students two weeks ahead of the concept that they will be doing. And then the teachers have that time to be able to plan to differentiate for that. Also, the teachers are doing a screencastify um, to be able to record the problem solving problems for the week. So the teacher records the one problem solving that's supposed to be really done. Everybody's doing it together, but it's about time. So a screencastify is recorded um, for everybody, for all the students. It's basically a flip model. And then everybody works on the second problem together. So we just wanna give you a quick, um, quick model of that. Beto, I'm still going to respect your time. I promise that you'll still have enough time. So we can do a quick video um, just to give you what that looks like. Is there supposed to be audio? Well, I see that it's the largest one. It's a multiplication or addition. Six plus six will give you 12. I also know six times two will give me 12, so maybe times two. So what you need to do now is check against the rest of the numbers. So if I think it's plus six, I need to see if my rule works for my second set of numbers. So what do I do to seven to get 13? All right, so that's just the model of what it is that we're doing. 
And we also are providing extra duty pay for those teachers for that um, extra work that they're doing of recording those lessons. So we have um, two Sharon Wells model classrooms in each grade level for them to be able to see. All right. And finally, we wanted to tell you, um, show me the blended. So we do walkthroughs, pictures, videos of various blended um, strategies taking place in the classroom. As Angela mentioned, teachers are very, very competitive. I'm not gonna play the video. Um, so morning routine, ambassadors, menus, data walls. So when we're doing our walkthroughs, we record the practices or ambassadors that we see, then we take pictures and then we email it out to everybody. So it's instant PD for everybody to be able to see from their peers. Like we said, teachers are, are competitive, but we're also really good learners. So that provides extra PD for our teachers and they can instantly go as we put it on the walkthrough, whose class that is. So the teachers can go to that um, classroom to get some help. Everyone likes to hear what they're doing. So we do glows and grows with our walkthroughs. Also notes of encouragement. Thank you, Vero Arvidres for punchbowl.com. Best investment that I've made to quickly be able to send um, a note to our teachers. And then, like I said, the, the teachers will share their videos with the class and the students love being able to see um, themselves being projected to everyone and that we find the good in everyone. Even our worst teacher, we will find something good. Not that we have the worst, um, but we know we all have those one teachers and that we try to pull out something that they're doing well. All right. And now I will turn it over to Veto. So Norma said questions would be at the end. So thank you all for your time. Thank you, Ms. Dana. Okay, so I'm going to take you to the perspective of building culture. And this is especially for um, campus leaders, campus principals who you're new to your campus, okay? I have to tell you that when I first became um, a principal here at Lancaster, they already had a tremendous culture and climate built. And it can be difficult, as I'm sure if anybody's new to campuses this year, no matter in what leadership role you are, it is getting that buy-in, right, for the next phase of the journey, okay? And that, and I had to do a lot of work because I never, and a lot of respect to you, Ms. Dolores Acosta, amazing principal, difficult shoes to follow, um, but it was the next part of the journey. And so when I explained to the team, I'm not, we're not here to undo anything that has been done. It is a matter of when you go on a vacation and you reach the destination, you always want to go to the next vacation, right? You always want to go to the next horizon. I said, and that's my role is, you know, you've been on your journey and your vacation with Ms. Acosta, and now it's time for us to go on a different journey and in a different, um, you know, uh, undertaking, which for us, it was going to be blended learning, right? So a lot of the work that I did as a first year principal, I'm going to tell you, it was not easy. It was difficult, but that's normal because that's part of the change process. I also, within these last five years, have have had to also combine um, a campus, which was, you know, I, I said we grew, we were pregnant and our family grew when LeBaron came on board and they joined our family. And that's kind of you know how and so there's been a lot of culture work so i'm going to take it from the point for you because everybody's culture is different right and it's going to be based on what is best for your community and your teachers and where they're at and a lot of this self-reflection came when i had the tremendous opportunity to attend a harvard under raise your hand texas and very, very difficult questions that you're going to have to work through when you want to build. If you know that your culture and your climate is struggling, these are significant questions that they had us think about in order to continue to build culture. So let me go ahead and share. And I'll try to talk super fast so we can do questions. Okay, 
So culture and climate, guess what? It starts with you, with the campus leader and your leadership teams. So if your campus and your leadership teams on, are not on board, then really the work begins with yourself first. That's what they had us do. Self-reflect on ourselves and then take it to the leadership team and then you take it to the, the teachers. And these are our kiddos, by the way. I'm so proud of them. Um, and then they had us think through the, the four essential trust questions to building culture and climate. And then I have a bunch of resources for you that I used in my uh, five years here at Lancaster. So one is the four trust questions. They had us reflect, can the faculty trust my motives, right? Motives are critical because especially when you're new to a campus and no matter, like I said, in what leadership capacity, teachers are gonna be wondering like, what is she up to? What is he up to? What are the motives? Um, they want to know if they can uh, trust on your competence. Like, am I displaying competence to my team? Am I being dependable? Can they trust my dependability or the dependability of the team? And can we trust the collegiality and their respectfulness? Okay. So first thing, walk through this exercise yourself and think about how do I not just tell these things but how do i show them how as a leader do i reflect these and then do it with your leadership team okay and so these are like several exercises that we went through so can i trust your motives you have to have a clear mission and a clear purpose your you your faculty needs to know what you're doing and why you're doing so you have to be transparent I was so transparent and I'm, I always even to this day continue to be so transparent that I can tell you that when I get YTA calls, nothing ever comes up of it because I'm always so transparent in my schedules. This is the why, this is why we did this. So a lot of the times at the beginning when we were launching for Blended, they were fearful. They were fearful to launch into Blended because they thought my motive was to, and I'm going to be vulnerable here and just say it, get rid of them, right? They thought Miss Fias is coming in, she wants to bring all her people in, and you know, she's going to get rid of people. And I was very transparent and I told them, okay, guys, T test, and even with T test, T test is about growing. Blended learning is about growing you. If I was on the path of not having you here at Lancaster, it would be an entirely different process. And I explained it like it was to that level of transparency. And you should have seen them. They were like, OK, so um, and remember, so when teachers are showing lack of skill, right, you build them up. But when it's lack of will, then you have to be vulnerable and you have to address those situations, right? A big thing is adult learners need purpose, which is why you always have to do state the why. Why are we doing this? Um, and you you tell them why. We talk a lot at Lancaster about being vulnerable. It's even become part of our language in PLC because teachers now model strategies for each other. You know, and at first they're kind of like, mm, and then you hear the team be vulnerable. OK, I'm going to be vulnerable. And then they get up and they model for each other. So it has to be the language and how you're displaying that. So that's how you can build a trust in motives. OK. Uh, can I trust your competence? Again, give the why, give the what, give the how. There is a resource from Simon Sinek at the end about how leaders lead action and change, right? Uh, like Dana mentioned, don't do get it and forget it, PD. You have to do it sustained and you have to be do it often. Give them what they need, right? Teachers are going to feel a sense of competence if they're not just getting and receiving what everybody is getting and receiving all the time, but that you're honoring their tier level, which is why, as, as Angela said earlier, I wasn't fearful of going school-wide because I knew just like students, teachers were going to tier, be tiered naturally based on their implementation of blended. And it was never, um, and it was also 
being vulnerable about doing it. Um, so use Choice PD. The other thing that I did to show competence is I started to use external benchmarks, which means that I started to compare our school to outside of our school. I used Ramona Elementary a lot. Why? Because our teachers were competitive and they were number one. You can also, from TA, I would also use schools in Texas who had the similar demographics of us so that we could see, besides comparing ourselves internal, how do we compare with, our, with others external? And that really lit a fire because uh, one thing I learned, Lancaster teachers are competitive. And so I use that to my advantage. advantage. Um, I know Dr. Chacon always says, says that the leaders are in your building, and it's true. Teachers need images of their possible self. So give them the, give them the exemplars of teachers who are doing it. Um, give them the products of things that are able to be done. And so it becomes that belief system that you can do it. You're here right now, but guess what? You can grow, grow, grow. And that is just a constant messaging. You can do it. We can grow, 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 be vulnerable. It becomes part of the common language, which is all, if you look at the pillars for um, culture and climate and relationships, you're doing it, but with your staff, okay? With the adults first. Then can I depend, can I trust your dependability? Be timely when teachers um, ask you questions, when they um, need something, be timely in how you respond to them, be accessible. My teams know that they can group me, me dojo me, text me, uh, text me. I always put on my line, you can see me, call me, text me, come by and I will move mountains for you. Make the time, make the time for the teacher, for the teacher planning. Um, one thing that I always have talked to my leadership teams about is teachers are going to fight, right? They will. It's normal. It's human nature. But I've always told them, I don't fear the fights. I don't fear the questioning. It's uh, take attendance. I don't fear the fights. I don't fear the questioning. I actually look for it. You, I have always been comfortable with seeing my staff uncomfortable, angry, bargaining, because you know what? Believe it or not, those are the stages of grief. And that means that change is happening. What is scary is those um, adult learners who just look at you and then they walk out. Um, and so I, I, I look for and I welcome the, the uncomfortableness of the change process because then you know that it's happening, right? And then you implement the I'm not going to give up on you belief system. That's another one. We're going to grow you from where you're at. Okay. And then can I trust the collegiality, right? So when you're new to a campus or you bring in new people on board, right? They're looking, they're kind of, can I trust this team? You know, can I trust what's being built here? acknowledge work styles. We did a lot of work um, my second year of how we learn as adult learners. And I do have some resources, a resource that you can use. We talked a lot about assuming positive intent, right? We can't say that, oh, this teacher just doesn't want to work. And I would tell my leadership teams, okay, let's assume positive intent. What is the fight? Why is there a fight? How can we navigate this fight so that there isn't a fight, okay? Take the time to build that collegiality. It really is important. Um, build the teacher leaders, uh, create PLC safe spaces, leadership team safe spaces where, we'll where we are vulnerable to speak our truths. Um, have intentional collaboration in ways that are gonna move the data. So one of the things that, you know, since from David Medina at Pasodale that I continued here at Lancaster is we do PD um, every Thursday and we hit it hard in the fall. So it's every Thursday after school. And then on the week of early release, we don't have PD. I mean, sorry, we don't have tutoring that week because then it becomes a PD week. 
And so if you look at a month, it's PD and PD across an early release week, um, because then we're able to give um, different chunks of learning for students. And then just remember that we will always grow together. I like to learn a lot about my faculty. So there is this template that I use that's called All About, All About You, that they share little facts about me that then I pull on to be able to um, give them their favorites, like the things that they need. And then believe it or not, we're heading into what I call devil sin, which is the deep evil vortex of late September, October, November. And it is an actual teaching um, period that happens where the energy begins to slump down. And so start having spirit months, start pulling on the all about use, start uh, really pushing on the team builder. So that way you can continue to build that collegiality. Okay, and then, well, how are you going to move adults when they don't want to, right? And a lot of that is, is using what's called coercive power, right? You have to make the rewards worthwhile. One is if you can provide these four things to your adults in a building, you're going to see the culture and the climate start to shift. We always have to assume positive intent, right? So we know that when there's hesitancy, it's probably because they don't feel that sense of competence. And so you always have to think about, okay, they're fighting, um, there's uneasiness. So how can we give them a sense of competence? Choice PD, give them voice, give them choice. Sounds like blended, right? Provide for them what they need continue to build that sense of belonging, build relationships within the grade levels and within the whole campus because teachers should know each other by first names all across the building as, um, as scholars, right? As adult scholars. Sense of power. I do check-ins and there is an example of the resource. Uh, when we were online, it was kind of like an online check-in, but now in person I do. I pop in and I'm like, how are you doing? What do you need? What's stressing you up at night? What's keeping you up? Um, because in that way, you kind of start putting out some of the little fires. And of course, the sense of security is going to come from why are we doing it? What are we going to do? And how are we going to do it? And just being very vulnerable and transparent about that. And then here are some resources. So here is one of the videos from Simon Sinek about how great leaders inspire action. Here is a learning style um, from School Reform Initiative using the Compass. Uh, my newsletter where I'm extremely transparent. An example of how we set up Choice PD, our All About You form that you can go ahead and tweak and then you use it for reward systems. My virtual check-in form um, that of course you can tweak because there are some staff members that they don't like to tell you in person they feel more comfortable kind of telling you through a form so there's that and if you're not a part of this face group facebook group uh principal principles leadership group join it uh, because you get tons of ideas for uh, team builders or spirit week spirit months and things like that so it's a great resource so let me stop sharing I know I talk like a million miles a minute, but there, I'm done. Phew, lots of time for questions. <laughs> and I'll share my video. I mean, my PowerPoint. Thank you, Veronica. Um, and thank you, Dana, as well. I know Dana said she had uh, a few videos that she um, didn't get to share. Would you like to share those now, Dana? Um, no, now that you put me on the spot, Norma, no, when you share the things, we'll just, okay. we'll just, when we share the slides, they can see them. Okay. Y'all, and I, I'm truly honored to have had these uh, two presentations from these two amazing um, leadership teams, really, because they're, it's a leadership team, as they mentioned. Um, blended learning will continue and move forward if you do as these two leaders do they make the connections for teachers i know dana said it uh, and angela about help teachers see that the best practices are blended learning practices and i heard them say 
that they are the lead learners, they are the lead um, in, in action, and you, they model what they expect in their teachers. Um, Veronica, great job on building that culture, thinking about how adults think and learn and grow and how they're feeling um, is very important. So the social emotional health of our, our campus teachers and leaders is very important. So um, I am truly honored and I would love to have uh, to open it up at this time for questions uh, for Dana and her team and for Ms. Fias. I know one question that I saw in there, um, you all are going to be sharing the two slideshows, right? All right. That was a question that was posed. <laughs> Same thing, slideshows. So one thing I, I well, we come up with some questions, uh, y'all, because I think I think they did such a thorough job that they're, you know, they pretty much covered it very thoroughly. But um, one thing I wanted to stress is that we we as leaders, and it's part of our charge, is that uh, we come across challenges. On, on time, it's always time, right? We come across challenges on resources, but at this current time when we're, um, when we're thinking about simplifying the resources, right? Narrowing our focus. The time we can invest is, and I heard Dana say this, she incentivizes, she buys the resources that are going to be helpful to get this work done. She pays teachers that extra time because they're professionals. Pay them the time. Invest your your campus funds on teacher time, paying them for their time. You can mandate certain things you want everyone to do. But really, when you are so passionate and you are so focused and believe in what you are doing, people will buy in. When they see that you're the leader, you're taking charge, you believe with all your heart in what you're doing, you believe in your scholars, um, they will do things. Um, they don't have to, and I think that's the the definition of leadership, right? Getting people uh, to do the things they didn't know they wanted to do, right? Getting them to do those things. And so I know there's a a, a quote uh, that talks about um, an organization's ability to learn and translate that learning into action rapidly is the ultimate competitive advantage. And so uh, it all starts with learning. And once you learn, is um, as, as you start to see in your campuses, and as Ms. Vias mentioned, some teachers will start to take on those practices, and there is also nothing more powerful than once you get those one, two, three, ten teachers to buy into your practices, they become your models for everyone else. So um, that's why I mentioned that we, we're always looking outside of our own organization, outside of our own campus for those great practices. When people are really learning them, taking them in, applying them to their own context, and they become the showcase, the model, the example of just taking those risks and applying those best practices um, in every situation. So that's what you want to build. And I know these, these ladies are doing that at their campuses. And so again, I thank them so much, uh, Veronica and Dana for sharing, uh, and Ms. Angela for sharing um, the great practices, the the passion, the motivation, and all of the things that you're creating um, through culture and relationships uh, with your teachers and your, and your teams there on campus. So that is so very powerful. And so again, um, and I know Dana mentioned it, it's bringing, and, and Veronica, bringing all your leadership team on board, all of you leading the learning and then being part of being on the same page um, and supporting the teachers in every aspect. And again, connections, connections, connections. When they don't see the connections, that blended learning is not separate and apart, that it is in what they want to do, moving from teacher-led to student-led, they will make those great connections. So great, great presentation. So ladies, will you can you add your, your link um, to the presentation here in the chat, or would you like to email it to me to forward it on to our teachers? Our, our leaders, excuse me. We'll email it to you, Norma. Okay. 
so Dana, I want you to, I do want you to uh, elaborate on one point, Dana. I know you, you went first year. You yourself have experience from East Point and, and beginning at another campus. How did you get all of the teachers? What, what process did you take the teachers through to get them all to buy in to blend it on year one? I don't know. Um, there was no magical recipe, Norma. I think by letting teachers, first of all, you have to um, clarify the myths because teachers think blended learning is something extra and it's not something extra or that it's all about technology, right? So that we needed to take the time to clarify um, the myths, what people believe. I believe when we um, opened up the pillars to them, pillars one and two, rather than giving all of them, they were like, we do some of these things already. So once they, that's why Angela had on hers about the reflection activity, that was the drop the mic activity, to be honest with you, because they also reflected on that there's some things that they need to tighten when we talk about what's loose and what's tight. And then when we did that presentation, we modeled when they came into the PD, we had um, a routine for them to do. We had all of the materials there. Um, so we modeled a lot of the practices. And when they were seeing that we were modeling it, they're like, whoa, there's a lot of things that we're missing in our classes that we should be doing, right? Even those that you call your master teachers. So when you put into that aspect that it's about the students and not about them um, to be able to um, have the students be the lead learners in the classroom, that was when everybody was like, okay, we can do this. Because like I said, there was a misconception that this is yet one another thing. And then when you looked at the learning loss that many of our students, you had to bring the DDI um, in because you have to have the data to drive um, the instructional practices. So um, that's, I think that's, that's pretty much where, where it happened. Um, and we just went from there. And Norma, I just want to add, when you go from a blended learning campus to one that's not, it's kind of shell shock, right? Whenever we've gone to um, visit, you always hear the teacher say, I never could go back to the other way that I used to, to teach. And we had to be able to build the culture first during COVID, as hard as that was. We had to focus more on culture. So I knew that blended was a way that we wanted to go. But like Vettel talked about what my motives were, um, they needed to first know that they could trust me. So um, once they're seeing the differences now, yes, it's tough. But man, what a difference um, for our kids and for our teachers. And th thank you for saying that, Dana, because I think a, a very great first step is to make sure teachers understand what blended is about, because even um, even sometimes as as you know we bring new campuses on board, there are a lot of misconceptions about what blended learning is and isn't, and so it's very vital to do that. Um, and Veronica, I know you can speak to um, if you, you can speak to any. I think you you because we have several campus leaders here who have uh, combined two schools, Veronica. Mm -hmm. And so tell me some of the things you did uh, to to empower the teachers um, to build that we're not from this campus or that campus, but now we are one, um, mm -hmm. one community and one family. Tell me about that, please. Mm -hmm. So it was it was just speaking the language. It was net one of the first things I'm going to say never, ever, ever, never, ever um, say the name of, the, of what it shall remain nameless, right? The, the, cause I know some, like I know Capistrano, you guys have a new, um, a new mascot, right? And so it was just using that mascot and just building the trust. I, I have to tell you that I did have a conversation with my staff before we did get the onboard from our our new family um, because like I told you that's how I approached it I'm like guess what guys we're pregnant and we're gonna grow <laughs> and you know we're gonna be a blended family and um, you know we kind of did we, that was kind of one of the things that we we dissected right because they were nervous about it um, and we just bring, we bring it to the table. I tell my leadership team, you guys are my devil's advocates. You have to 
pick out for me what the issues are going to be, right? And we we address them head on. And so it was, you know, not feeling accepted. So then we thought, okay, well, how can we have them feel accepted? How do we make the whole team feel united, right? Um, and it was a lot of getting to know each other. So one of the things that I did do, I'm trying to think like, what did I do? Um, is the all about you. I really depend a lot on the all about you because you start seeing commonalities between your teams. And so if six people liked um, Almond Joys, I would highlight that. I'm like, hey, guess who likes Almond Joys? Um, so that we can start finding the commonalities. Um, I talk a lot about birthday twins, you know, oh, she's your birthday twin. Uh, then they also had to give me a walk-in song. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the walk-in walk -in, walk -in song. That's a really cute strategy to use. Um, they all give you a song that if they were a boxer, right, they're entering their school, what song would they want playing? And I would put the YouTube video for their song. And then we knew that that was this week's Coach Joe's walking song, you know? And so then teachers started to, to hey, you like rock. I love, I love rock. Once they start seeing how they're common and just continuing with that, you know, the we're going to be vulnerable, um, respecting you know how they learn addressing things head on a lot of team building team building that involved them talking to each other a lot of those kinds of team buildings um mixed so not necessarily just within their grade level but mixing the whole campus because then you build relationships faster than if they just stick to their little team little team little team um so yeah, we would just, you know, little things like that. Thank you, Veronica. And and that is very powerful, y'all. With, with the heavy load we feel this year, right? We feel an urgency academically, but we, just like we can't overstep the relationship building in the classroom, we can't overstep uh, bringing those relationships to the table and helping um, those strategies bring us together as a family with one goal, one vision, one mission, and that we're all we're all in this together. And it's a lot more doable when we have uh, the support from each other and our awesome leadership team. So uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, unless we have any questions, do we have anything in the chat? Anyone? Norma, um, can just you a, add one thing really quick, please? Yes, ma'am. There's a lot of us um, elementary who are doing Sharon Wells. And I think one thing that we don't do enough is it's usually it's about competing rather than collaborating. So if there's any of you that are doing Sharon Wells and want to jump on um, the model with what we're doing with the blended model, please. It's not about Parkland. It's not about you know, um, Lancaster, it's about us doing things that are good for kids. So if there's any principals, assistant principal, who's at whomever wants to be able to collaborate all of us together to be able to take this walk together, we shouldn't have to wait till we have rounds looking at each other's schools to implement good practices. So I just wanna put that out there. If there's any principals that want to be um, a part of this journey with us, then just email us and um, we can work together, smarter, even instructional coaches, you know, math science instructional coaches, we can learn from each other. Sharon Wells, you know, is very prescripted, but we're finding ways that are just good for kids um, when we're learning, you know, using those learning menus and then integrating that technology. So just want to put it out there. Um, if you do just email me or email our coaches, email Angela so that we can start having a collaborative group um, for the focus of Sharon Wells. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, Dana. <clears throat> Great point. You know, y'all, we, we all signed up for blended learning because we, we truly feel passionate and believe that these are the best practices, the best thing for our scholars. And so we have to be, thank you, Dana, we have to be a community of sharers, of learners, of open transparency with each other help each other out rather than feeling that we're competing against each other. 
So yes, we have to share the great practices, guys, because I'm at all of y'all's campuses and I see amazing things at each of your campuses. And that's why I, a lot of this that we're going to do in this meeting is share out uh, strategies that we're using because we can always learn something from each other, um, something we hadn't thought about. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, uh, Dana and team. Thank you, Veronica and team for sharing with us this morning. Um, for being open and honest about your struggles and about the the great things you have going moving forward. So we really do appreciate your time, um, the time you prepared to do this. Uh, um, all of that is so very much appreciated. And thank you for sharing your resources, your PowerPoints. So I know Dana will share uh, her videos with me. It's already so that, there, Norma. We put it oh, in the chat. It's there. In the chat? But the and the is it has the videos embedded, Dana? Okay, so then yes, we'll put those under in our empowered site with our uh, our playlists and pillars. Okay, so we can share how you're flipping that learning data. Awesome strategy. Um, just uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, we need to make sure y'all have scheduled your check-ins for uh, for September. And remember, we also have to have conducted a DDP for the first nine weeks, which is over on October first. Um, it can be very informal, y'all. We're, we're just walking around the campus and seeing um, what your focus was and how we're moving in that direction. Very informal. Um, you get great feedback, uh, mostly from each other there at the campus, as we saw at Dana's campus yesterday. Uh, so please uh, schedule that with me if you haven't done so. We finally got the codes for the courses from Catlin Tucker. And um, we, I will be sending out information uh, principles to you all and leadership teams. If you signed up, or, all the leadership teams will get um, each one of the courses, the, the getting started with blended learning and the advanced uh, course with blended learning. I will only share with the principals the UDLBL. We got two per campus and maybe you can assign maybe your, uh, one of your special ed leads um, that can have that course and share with uh, with their special ed and with all the campus. Uh, but we did, I did purchase a, each one of those courses, the blended and get it started and advanced for every uh, campus teacher on your campuses. Now I will send a specific email to the ones that signed up for doing those 30 hours this month i know we're very short guys i apologize uh, we had so much trouble with the vendor um getting all of the paperwork they needed to do so uh, tell them to just give it their best shot and in the end we'll go on the honor system they'll come and sign for the hours that they come were able to complete this month okay they'll have to come in and sign by september 30th all right so do we have anything to add shelly is Anything that I missed or forgot? I, I just appreciate this. I know that uh, sharing with, with one another and sharing what you're doing uh, is only going to be beneficial uh, for all blended campuses. So I appreciate both of you. I appreciate everything that you're doing. And thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful rest of your week. We'll be seeing you. And Ms. Puente, you. you should be getting the email for today. the 30 hours today. Today. All right. Okay. Thank you for your patience. You said we had to sign up for two things. Is that what you and I did together already? Or do I need to sign up for something else? Uh, well, Ms. Ramos, we'll, Dr. Ramos, we'll need to um, schedule a check-in and and we'll do some more of the of the DDP. Okay. Okay. Do I schedule that through an email or do I? Yes. Do I just pick a date? Yes. Okay. Pick a, pick a couple. Okay. In All right. September, right. right? Before September ends. All right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hi, Norma. I had changed the date of the time for a four hour meeting, but I never, didn't get a response. I changed it to the afternoon if you were available. On um, the afternoon of. What day was it, Claudia? It was on, you said you were busy on the 23rd? 
but uh, or the 20, I, I think it was the 22nd. We had put it down for the 20, Wednesday the 22nd. And then um, you said you were busy in the morning, but then I asked if you could do the afternoon 12.30 to 2.30. 12.30 to 2.30 on the 22nd? Yes. yes. Okay, I'll put you yes. down. Okay, thank you. We'll see you then. Bye guys, 12, thank you. You said 12.30 to 2.30, right? I have a question. Yeah, 12.30 to 2.30. Shelly, I have a question Ms. Drodate, um brought up, and it's a really good question. So, okay. you know how we have eduphoria where kiddos are able to log on and take their test? Right. Do, we, do our kiddos able to log in and look at their data? Is what we're running